What is up guys, Matt here. I just wanted to do a really simple and quick video today. Something I came across a while ago when I started working with Motion Builder and Unreal Engine 4. I just wanted a solid base to start working. And by that I, m I mean that I wanted a, a proper character that would be fully compatible with the, with the engine. So of course there are tons of great characters out there that are going to be compatible with the uh, hierarchy, the, uh, the naming convention and everything regarding the Unreal Engine skeleton. The problem, if I call, call this a problem, is that they're gonna, most of them will be uh, paying. Uh, my solution today is fully free because it's using the Unreal Engine 4 mannequin. We're gonna be able to export it from the engine, import it in, in our case, Motion Builder, um, characterize it so that you can start animating with a control rig on it, and then start exporting the animations back to the uh, editor. Let's see how it goes. All right, so the first thing we want to do is obviously to start the engine. Uh, it doesn't matter if you already have your own project. In my case, I'm gonna just start a new one so that uh, we'll just have a, a fresh start. Uh, so I'm gonna do this really quickly. I'll just use a third person next using blueprints. I think I can just uh, leave this uh, all at one. My project three is good enough. Create project. So uh, what, we, what we want just have to access to the, the character itself, nothing more. Uh, so if, if you have your own project, you just have to make sure you have access to the Unreal Mannequin. And then it's just going to be a matter of, uh, of a few clicks uh, to start the export. So um, the best way to do it is just to find the mannequin in your uh, content browser. So you will have it in uh, go back to content and then enter mannequin, character, mesh. And then you have a, um, a bunch of elements over there. The one that is uh, the, the one that we want is the SK mannequin over here. So you have the female version. These are the physics assets. Uh, so specifically for the editor and then the skeleton definition. But what we want is the SK mannequin, which embeds the bone hierarchy along with the along with the mesh itself. So just select this, right click on it. And then you will see something called asset actions. And then down here on the move, you will have export. Just click on this, select your uh, destination projects. I'm just gonna leave it the way it is. My project three content, SK Malikin, and I just call it export so that it's clear for us. Uh, leave the FBX by default. It's the, the, the uh, format we want. Click save. I'm not really sure this will make a difference, uh, the compatibility of the exporter. I'm using Motion Builder 2018, so I could technically chose this one, pick 2018, but I'm not even sure I've changed this the first way I, I, I did it for myself. So you can just, I mean, you can try and maybe let me know if, if, it, makes, uh, if it makes a difference. Uh, and then you can leave the everything else. Let me see. Yeah, no, you don't have to change anything here. Export preview, don't want that. Map skeleton. All right, click export. Now, we already have our file. The next step we want to do is to import it in Motion Builder. So we'll do this right now. But I'll just uh, open a new file. Uh, so if I remember correctly, that was Unreal Projects, my project three content, was it? Yeah, there it is. SK Mannequin Export. Click open. I don't want to save it because I don't have anything. Uh, you don't have to import it because it's, it's empty anyway, uh, but you can, you can open everything else. And there you go. You have your, uh, Unreal or Mannequin here. And as you can see with the skeleton as well. The problem is we have at that moment is that it's not, uh, you, 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 you cannot start animating 
because you're missing the a proper character, you're missing the skeleton. So using that hierarchy, we're gonna start characterizing uh, the, the the character by assigning it a new, uh, creating a, a skeleton for motion builder. So let's do this right now. Under uh, your character's control here, you just can click on define skeleton. Click on define here. Now, one thing to remember is that Unreal uses something that is sometimes called a A pose, but Motion Builder requires your characters to be in T pose in order to properly um, detect the axis as part of the uh, of the of the software constraint to have your character in T pose every time you set set them up. So. What we'll do here is just uh, so it's prop already facing the proper axis, but the the arms are gonna have to be higher, pretty straight, so horizontal. Uh, we're gonna do this now. So a couple of uh, of tips here. Uh, once you switch to rotation, just uh, switch to uh, local, and then what I would suggest you to do is to. Uh, enable the uh, the snap here, snap rotation, but to use a snap of uh, five degrees. So if you don't have that, I recommend you do this. Um, you create this here. So if you click on settings here, if you have a rotation snap angle, so uh, the one I have is 45. But if you if you press something like uh, just for you to have the example, let's say I'm gonna press 15, press OK. It says uh, that some parameters are going to be updated only if you restart the program, but this is not part of these parameters, so you don't have to. Now, if you right-click on this, see the 15 that I didn't have before, I have it here. So every single time you add a new snapping angle, like a parameter, it will be available in, in that drop list, which is very convenient. I'm personally uh, using a lot 45 mostly at work just to make sure I have uh, proper orientations based on the axis um, and 5 is also pretty cool and especially for that character you'll see that it's increments of 5 that will give us a perfect t-pose so just uh, create if you don't have it the 5 degrees and then select it now what you can do is select both upper arms and uh, having in mind you're in local rotation here if you start uh, rotating them then they will both rotate at the same time, which was, which will prevent us to do this twice for both arms and make sure they are at a perfect line. And then do the same thing for the um, four arms. And that's basically it. No, I still have to make sure this is properly aligned. So that would be that direction. Same thing for the four arms backwards or oh, the other way pick all right that's a perfect t-pose and now what we want to do is uh it's going to be a bit tedious we need to define each single bone from uh, the the skeleton we have here so the the hierarchy i have here and define them on the motion builder definition now from uh from here you have different options. It's mostly based on your um, preference. I usually, so what I suggest is to start from the, uh, the, the the front view. You can you can as well use the schematic view to start selecting the bones and um, assigning them here. But uh, it's, it's, it's just, you know, it, there, there's no uh, good or bad. It's just uh, your way to work. If you're using the uh, the front view, I would suggest to remove that selection uh, to the um, on the remove the deactivate the geometry selection. So to do so, uh, have in mind that the character comes with uh, four lots. So you know level of details. So what you want to do here is select them four, and just under properties here, just uncheck enable selection, and then you won't be selecting the mesh anymore. Which means you can um, really easily select bones only and now what we want to do is just to assign each bone to uh, where they're supposed to go 
so I will start with the uh, with the hips here. So you have two options. You can select the bone, so say the uh, the uh, the left leg here. Right click and then uh, assign selected bone. What you can do as well is uh, double click on a um, on a bone here. It will enter some selection mode and then just click and select the bone you want to assign to it. And that's it, basically. Okay, now for the spine, always start from the, the bottom up. So, see you, you have more than, than one spine here. You have uh, actually three, so these, the other ones are gonna be defined over here. But start always start from the, the bottom. So spine, sorry, spine one here, spine two, that's it. Then shoulders, left arm, And then the, the, the football uh, you have here, toe base. So you can use the schematic view to select the ball. It's gonna be easier, I think. And then same thing for the right foot. Okay. If you want to assign the, the root, it's gonna be on the reference here. Uh, but you don't have to assign this as long as you, you don't, you're not using a root motion. Uh, it's optional if you if you just use the uh, the regular system which is code driven uh, but you know assigning it to make sure you have a proper template is 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 good now only thing we have left is the uh, the fingers it's the uh, the most annoying part because you have a lot of bones to to assign uh, so what I will do is just I'll uh, speed up the video because it's pretty straightforward you have uh, four knuckles uh, sorry, three, and so let me show you really quickly. What you can do is just uh, have, for example, a. Uh, I usually have a perspective view, and then I zoom on uh, the hand. That's one of your options, and then you select all the um, uh, the, the finger fragments from there. Or I'm using the schematic view, which is going to be a bit easier. So this is the the left hand, and starting from here, so it's in uh, alphabetical order. Uh, unfortunately, uh, but you know, uh, the naming convention is pretty it's pretty clear, so index, middle, pinky, and so on. Uh, so I'll do this really quickly, I'll speed up the video because you'll see that uh, it, it's pretty straightforward. All right, so that's it. We're all set. Now, uh, two things. The first thing is that you probably have noticed that I had the mirror matching uh, enabled here, which is supposed to, when you assign, say, the, uh, the right arm, it's supposed to automatically, if the naming convention is correct, detect that the left arm is called, you know, L underscore upper arm instead of R. Uh, for some reason, uh, it's not always working for me. So if you have find the reason behind this, uh, it's probably, it could be that Motion Builder broke something, maybe in some version, it could be a, uh, a, a bug. So that sometimes it works, sometimes it does not. Um, I have personally never found the reproduction for this. So if you have any info, uh, please share it in the comments. One thing to remember here is that you can, for the future, save the skeleton definition, which means every single time you would have um, to define a new character coming or that has to be compatible with Unreal, you don't have to redo everything from scratch. So you can save the uh, skeleton definition and the next time you want to redo something for another character, for example, that you've just bought, you just load the definition and then with a one click, everything we've just done will be uh, automatically assigned. 
Okay, and then the last thing we have to do is just to lock our character, create the control rig, and we're gonna be able to start animating. So just to do this under definition here, just lock your character. Uh, must be in stance pose facing the positive Z axis. It is, click on biped. You have your character ready. And then just to create a, a control rig, it's under create control rig, FKIK, boom. You have your character with a control rig ready to be animated. Everything's working. The hands, the fingers, whoops. Everything is ready for you to go. You can start animating, do really cool animations and export them to the engine. All right guys, like I said, really simple, really easy. If you have any trouble, any uh, questions, any information on that mirror matching problem, uh, please let me know. I will see you very soon. Bye-bye.